Next up, at UFC Vegas 89, we have Ricardo Hamos taking on Julian Erosa. Ricardo Hamos is 16-5 and five overall, 2-3 and three in his last five. He is alternating wins and losses. He's taking on the very durable, normally very durable, Julian Erosa, 28-11, and 3-2 in his last five. He's coming off back-to-back -back knockout losses. And this is an interesting fight because Ricardo Hamos is a very dangerous fighter. He is good everywhere. He's long, he's rangy, he's got slick BJJ, good head kicks, spinning kicks, a great jab, solid leg kicks. If a fight hits the ground, he's going to be hunting for a submission, and he is very fast in those transitions. He's coming off the early loss to Charles Jordan where he literally landed zero, exactly zero punches before he was guillotined. He's taking on Julian Erosa. He's also very long for this weight class, and he uses his length well, both on his feet and on the ground. He is a very well-rounded guy with high output striking and more than six significant strikes landed per minute with solid wrestling and almost two takedowns per fight. He is dangerous everywhere. He is an absolute dog, and he's coming off his second knockout loss in a row. This last time was to Fernando Padilla, where it felt very early. I think a lot of people agree that was sort of an early knockout. This is a tough fight to pick because Ricardo Hamos is dangerous, but he's also finishable. Julian Erosa isn't as dangerous, and outside of these last two fights, he's historically very tough, and he could just dog fights out. I'm going the underdog here. I think I like Julian Erosa to win this fight. He has fought the much higher level of competition. I can see him weathering a storm, grinding out a decision. He is a plus 132 dog just yesterday. He was a plus 155 dog, so it seems some money is coming in. This line is tightening, but I do think Julian Arosa can sneak this fight out. What do you think, Jakey? Boy. Yeah, Julian has been finished in six of his last seven losses, so I'm not sure. <laughs> I said historically durable, and then I laughed because my next sentence was, he's coming off two knockout losses in a row. Yeah, six of his last seven losses are, are, are TKO losses, but I mean, even... I mean, I can see why you say that because in exchanges and stuff, he's not going to quit on himself, right? He's not going to yeah. drop it. And you saw that in the last fight. You mentioned it was he got dropped and then tried to pop back up and then he got dropped and they stopped the fight, but it looked like he was fine, but it was definitely not a good situation. Ricardo Ramos came in in the last fight against Charles Jordan. And honestly, you know, I don't want to toot my own own here, but I had a uh, Charles Jordan submission bet on that fight. I think it was like plus 800, plus 900 that we hit because I knew that Charles was going to be live on his back. But Ricardo was doing a great job. He got the takedowns he needed. He was just kind of hanging out a little bit too much and, and Charles was just chasing that guillotine over and over and over. And it was actually, I think, a one-arm guillotine. So I think Ricardo thought he was safe and then all of a sudden it was like, Oh, no. You know, Ricardo is going to be the more dangerous fighter in this matchup. Julian has shown in his last two fights that he is getting chinned a little bit. Ricardo is a not a jiu-jitsu nerd. That's what he wants to do. But he honestly throws heat, right? He throws the spinning stuff. He throws the wild elbows. He, I think he's going to come with something that definitely at, at some point early is going to hurt Julian Arosa. Julian might, you know go to the, the grappling or the wrestling, because that's a lot of times when people get hurt, they want to just grab onto you. And Ricardo is a jiu-jitsu guy. And a lot of times, even when they're the, these jiu-jitsu guys, when they hurt people, they will go to the subs. You see that a lot with Brendan Allen. Brendan Allen is a club and sub type of guy. He will hurt you and then jump on you to get the submission. I think Ricardo Homos is... Uh, TKO is plus 250. His plus or his submission is plus 475. I actually already played. I didn't play for Prima. I played for myself at plus 550 is where it opened because I think it could be a club and sub situation here, but Ricardo should be able to get this done. I don't know where Julian, unless he's able to weather the storm and, and, and do something late second or late third, uh, you know, it's kind of wild to me that Ricardo opened as a dog in this fight. I like Ricardo. Yeah, I mean, uh, I can get. I get it. He is flashy. He'll spin. He'll just throw everything at you. But uh, people are talking in the live chat like Ricardo Hamos is the undefeated prospect in this match. Both of these guys are on the verge of getting cut. Whoever loses this fight, including Hamo Ricardo, could potentially be cut. Dude's two and three in his last five, alternating wins and losses, not looking incredible. He's not going to get cut with two losses in a row, obviously. But people acting like... You just Ricardo said he Hamos could get is cut, phenomenal. And you said he's not going to get cut. Well, I mean, I, 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 and then I literally was, it was for dramatics. Grow up, read the room. But he might get cut, honestly. I think this is a close fight, and as do most of the public, which is why this line is tightening. It did flip. Julian Rosa opened as the favorite. 
So the bookies originally thought Julia Rosa should be the favorite, should win this fight. Somebody commented, some fuckwit tool bag that's going to get banned commented Angela with the worst breakdown ever. When is he going to learn you can't pick people with no chins like Julian? Everybody. Great point. That's a great point. The bookies had Julian as the favorite. And then a couple of people bet it the other direction and now it's tightening back up. I hope he flips a favorite and I hope he wins. And if that happens, that dude, I'm not saying his name to give him credit. It's Rogan banned. Shorts. <laughs> you fucking loser. I Okay. And I agree with you, Rogan. You know what? Is the car leaving now? What the hell is she talking about? Listen, dirty. Oh, river, in the dirty, car, dirty river, Sorry. fresh ninety. There it's we go. not uh, it's not y'all. It's uh, yeah. That's just that's boys being boys. Anyway, do you trust your boy enough to spend eighty nine hundred dollars in DraftKings? I think on this type of card, I think he's definitely got to be in some lineups. And I'll be there too. I don't know if I, I can see I'll that. Be at the, uh, I'll be at the fight. So this is one of the fights I'm looking forward to. <laughs> Uh, this should actually be a, a very good fight. They're both long. They're both willing to go at it. Neither one of them are particularly soft. And they both get finished. Under two and a half is the way to go for sure. Um, Julian is, I think, a durable guy. But to your point, maybe I'm giving him too much credit for how durable he was two years ago versus what he is now. But either way, if you do want to unlock the picks, the bets, the round line leans, the tools, and more, we want picks.com. Click become a member. It's only $10. And that $10 will get you all the way through UFC 300. Before you go, let me give you $50. Anybody who goes to wewantpicks.com slash bets and signs up with any one of our affiliate partners gets $50 as a thank you. Use the link, sign up, make a deposit. We send you 50 bucks as a thank you.